number one, this is what over $800 worth of filament looks like, and I'm about to start the largest 3D printing project that I have ever attempted before, and I've already screwed things up. And if you couldn't already guess, I'm gonna be printing a massive life-size statue of one of my favorite comic book characters. This is definitely gonna be a multi-part video series where I walk you through the entire process of printing this ginormous statue for my studio here. And it's gonna definitely involve all of these rolls of filament and potentially even more, depending on how crazy I'm gonna take this and if I don't screw things up even further. And what I'm gonna be focusing on in this first video is actually getting the files prepared for printing and showing off the first set of things that I've run off and printed for this project using some of this filament here that I ordered in bulk off of Amazon. This is all El Goose PLA, and fun fact, they actually released a few new colors of their PLA, which I've got on display here that I'm excited to be printing with and trying out for this video project. And if you've already seen someone like Galactic Armory who has been printing these massive Halo statues of Master Chief and the Orbiter, I mean, there's no way that I wasn't gonna attempt one of these for my own studio with my favorite Marvel character, Magneto. Now, before you can run off and just start 3D printing things, you actually need a file that you wanna 3D print. I ended up finding this file from Wicked 3D of their Magneto statue, which was just the perfect option for me. Comes in multiple file options as well, one solid print versus broken up into multiple pieces. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to figure out is actually how you want to scale the files so that they're life size. Now, Lubin 3D that we'll be looking at in a second can help you with that. However, I'm a little bit more familiar with Mesh Mixer and things like uh, Prusa Slicer. So I brought my files directly into Mesh Mixer, got them all aligned so that they are one solid piece, exported that out, brought that into Prusa Slicer, and then figured out how tall I wanted it to be in millimeters, and then pasted that into the slicer, which gave me the percentage value that I needed to scale all of my parts. So I went back through and individually scaled up all of the parts and then started exporting those out so that I could bring them directly into Lubin 3D to start hollowing and cutting up. And anytime you see someone printing off these huge statues, more than likely they're using a software called Lubin 3D that allows you to take a model. Well, it actually allows you to do a whole lot of things. But one of the core things that people use that particular software for is scaling up and cutting your object into a whole bunch of digestible 3D printable parts that you can easily run off and print. And what's even cool about it is they have the ability to work with multiple different machines machine sizes so you're not locked into just one particular size for your files for the things that you're looking to print. They also have a free trial of the software that you can run off and try out for yourself for 30 days if you wanted to run off and try and print something like this for yourself or even something smaller but still large. I do have plans on printing some other really large things that's going to require me to continue to work with that software. However, you could in theory run off and do all this in Mesh Mixer or in Prusa Slicer if you really wanted to. Depending on how large of an object that you're printing, that could be a really time consuming process and this makes it extremely easy. Plus added in the features and functionality of being able to hollow out the model so you're not wasting a ton of filament and you have the option of adding pegs into your 3D prints so that you can actually make the process of joining the parts together. Oh, I forgot to also mention that this software will also allow you to tag all of the parts that you're printing so it'll make it much easier for you to fully assemble these things later. And then once everything's generated, you can go to that folder location and you will see all of your printed file parts split up for you that you can now easily run off and start 3D printing, which is where I want to say a big thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. Not only do they have some amazing 3D printers, but they also have some incredible deals on filament that you can find over on their website or potentially even over on Amazon. But they also now have some new color options as well that I'm printing all of these statue parts in for this particular project. I'm very excited about this. This has been something that I've been wanting to do for such a long time, and I'm using a whole bunch of different Elegoo 3D printers for this project. And I've been printing off parts for the better part of the past week across a variety of different Elegoo Neptune machines. And I wanted to mention that for most of these printers, I now have 0.6 millimeter nozzles installed in them. That's gonna help speed up the printing process as well as make these parts just a little bit beefier and more solid, in my opinion, versus a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But really, the, the it's the print time that I'm looking to save as there is a ton of files and a ton of parts to print here, and I'm printing everything at 0.28 millimeter 
millimeter layer height. And I'm also using all of my profiles for Prusa Slicer that you can find over in my Patreon, which I wanted to mention a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making like just insane projects like this. Now make sure you double and triple check your scaling before running off and printing everything that you've got like it's all nailed down properly because I initially started printing off parts and I was like, man, this is looking really big and chunky and awesome. And then I saw this print come off of part of the boot for one of the shoes. And I was like going, that is huge. That looks like it's like a size 16, size 18, half of this is the back of the boot. It's just insanely large. So I went back and double checked everything. Yeah, my original scaling was off by a good bit. The statue itself would have ended up being over, I think about seven feet, four inches tall, which is just enormous. Just the figure itself, not even the base that I'm planning, planning on doing with this as well. But thankfully ended up catching that fairly early on and wasn't too far into the process of getting these things printed so that I could get the scaling corrected and then run off and just print an absolute ton of things. Also, the great thing about this project is I ended up having an issue with one of my files where it didn't fully print the top half of it. So I just went off and re-sliced the top half and I'm just gonna 3D glue the two pieces together because it's just all gonna be glued together anyways. And when it comes to actually assembling all the prints together, take your time making sure everything's properly aligned. You might need something like a deburring tool to help clean up some of the brims around your prints or elephant's foot that you might have as well as shaving down some of those pegs to insert them properly into the holes. I was having a really tough time with this as well as I ended up using a rubber mallet to try and smack those into place. And I also ended up using some 3D glue to help everything seal together. And in the very near future, I'll be going back over to reinforce these seams by filling them in and smoothing them out using some of the same techniques that I was just recently showing off in a previous video that I'll have linked above. All right, I know I've said this before, but this honestly might be one of the coolest things that I've ever run off in 3D printed. I am so excited about this project and how this is turning out so far. This is just looking amazing, absolutely amazing. Printing at a 0.28 millimeter layer height with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle seems to be a great combination for print speed and quality of the prints. The prints themselves are looking great and nice and clean looking. Plus, I already have a whole bunch of the thigh pieces here for one of the legs already printed. I've got to start the other ones here. I have a very lofty goal of trying to have all of this fully printed before the end of the month. I'm gonna try and see if we can power through this through the month of March and get all of these things printed, but I actually need your help because the statue doesn't stand flat on its feet. He's kind of like hovering there in the air and he's got this little peg on the side of the leg there. It's nowhere near enough to support the weight of this statue. So I need your help coming up with ideas of how best I could support this and still have him sort of floating in the air. I'm thinking maybe burrowing some holes through the bottom and PVC pipe or like a metal rod through the legs. I don't know, but let me know if you guys have any ideas. Hey! I'm also keeping a detailed log of all of the prints that I'm running for this project so that we can hopefully get a final tally of how long it's taken me to print these things, how much material, and how much it's cost me to actually print this big, huge statue. So as of right now with the leg pieces here and the thigh parts that I printed, it comes out to 167 hours of print time, almost seven days of printing for these parts. I've also used almost 12 and a half pounds of filament, which comes out to about $101 so far in estimated costs for the materials that I've used. I'm crazy excited about this project and really excited to share the next steps with you all here in the next few weeks. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time.